Welcome to the video on Pythagoras. Now Pythagoras deals with right angled triangles. This means you have triangles with a 90 degree angle in them. Our first step is going to be labeling our three lengths so that we can use our formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This formula is Pythagoras's theory and it's really important you memorize this because it's going to come up in your exams. Now a, B, and C just refer to the three different sides, so you're going to need to know how to label them. The first thing you need to know is actually C. C is the longest side in the triangle. This is always the side that's opposite your 90 degree angle. So if we label that one C, then we can label the other two A and B. It does not matter which way around you label them, as long as the two shorter sides are labeled A and B, and the longer sides labeled C. Once we've labeled our sides, we can now use our formula to discover what the long length is. What is C? So say I told you that A was actually 3 meters long and B was 4 meters long. And I want to know how long is C? We can plug these numbers into our formula. A is 3 meters long and B we just found out is 4 meters long. So now we can solve for C. We'll do it by hand, but actually you can just plug this into your calculator 3 squared plus 4 squared. But 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, so let's add them together, that all still equals c squared, and we have 25 equals c squared. Do you think that's our answer? No, not yet. We don't want to find c squared, we want to find c. And the way we get rid of a squared is we square root both sides. So c is actually the square root of 25, which is 5. Now we've found our answer for c, simply by plugging in numbers. So just to go over the steps that I've actually done here, your first step is going to be square the short size. So square the 3 and then square the 4. Then you add them together like the formula tells you to. And finally, once you've added them together, and I just do this in your calculator, square root your answer. Because that's going to give you the final length. So three steps. Square the two short sides, add them together, and then square root your answer. That's going to give you an answer for the long side. Now, I imagine that some of you will follow this fine. So I'm just going to keep going and explain what happens if you're given the long side and one of the short sides and you have to find the final short side. Let's look at a situation where that happens. Again, remember to label your triangle A, B, and C, where C is your longest length and that longest length will always be opposite the right angle. Don't be mistaken and think it's the one that's on the angle itself. It's the one opposite your 90 degree turn. That's C. The other two are A and B. And we know our formula, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's see if we can solve a problem finding one of the short lengths using that same formula. So say B was 6 and C was 10. And I want to find A. What's this final length here? Well, the first thing, I want to get a squared equals, because I don't want to know what a squared plus b squared equals, I just want to know about a. So we take b squared off both sides. That means that these two b squareds cancel out, and we're left with a squared equals c squared minus b squared. Now that we have a formula for a squared, let's plug in the numbers that we know. We know c is 10, so we're going to put 10 squared into this equation. We know that b is 6, so instead of b we're going to write 6 squared. Then we can solve it. 10 squared minus 6 squared gives us 64. Now again, we don't want to know a squared. We want to know what a is. So remember to square root your answer at the end because that will give you your actual answer. So this length here must be 8. Now just to recap on those steps, if you're finding one of the short lengths rather than a long length this time, you're still going to square the two numbers that you know. But this time, You'll take the long side squared, the 10 squared, and take away. You'll minus the other short side squared, minus the 6 squared. And that's going to give you your a squared. Finally, square root your answer because you want to know a, not a squared. Now there's one final type of question that can be given for Pythagoras. These are two-dimensional triangles. These are drawn flat on a piece of paper. But sometimes you can be given 3D situations where you need to use Pythagoras. These 3D situations are getting onto the merit and excellence level stuff. But actually, it almost seems easier than some of the stuff you've learned. Let's look at how we do this. In this situation, you're going to find a 3D length. 
Imagine this box with a width, a height, and a depth. So three dimensions. And you want to go from the very front left-hand corner up to the very back right-hand corner. So from one corner to the very far opposite corner. You've been given your three different measurements, four meters wide, three meters deep, and five meters high, and you have a formula. But this formula we learned was only for two-dimensional triangles. We're going to have to get a new formula. That new formula is a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals d squared. Now, I'm sure you might be guessing what's going on. The a, b, and the c now are the three short lengths. And this d refers to that really long angle from the front left-hand corner to the back right-hand corner. So we're going to now label our sides a, b, and c for our three shorter sides, or the sides which are not the big diagonal. Our long side is going to be our d. Then what we have to do is we have to put those numbers into the formula. So a is 4, so we put that into the equation. b is 3, so we put that into the equation instead of b. And c is 5, so we put that into the equation instead of c. Now we're in a position where we can find d squared. We've squared all our numbers, we're going to add them together, and we can just do that in our calculators the easiest way. We'll get an answer for d squared, which in this case is 50. But we don't want to find d squared, we want to find d. So in order just to find d, we have to get rid of the squared. And to do that, we have to square root both sides. Square rooting 50, this gives us an answer of 7.07 .07 for d. So this is very, very similar to the last two, except you have an extra side just plugged in. Your steps would be you have your formula with the a, b, c, and d now. You square your three short sides, you add them together, and then you square root your answer. So let's look at what you need to take away from this video. You need to know that you label a 2D triangle a and b for the two short sides and c for the long side. And remember, your c is always opposite that 90 degrees, where your a and b it does not matter which one is which, as long as it's the two shorter sides. Secondly, you need to write out your formula, and you must memorize this. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. After you know this formula, you're going to substitute in the numbers you know. You're going to square both these numbers because we have a squared, which is 12 squared, and b squared, which is 9 squared, and that will allow you to find c squared. Once you know what c squared is, remember to square root your answer. And that's going to give you your final result. Now this is a two-dimensional problem finding the long length. The only difference when you're finding one of the two short lengths in this triangle is you use the different formula, which instead of short length squared plus short length squared and square root your answer, you're going to get the long length squared and take away the short length squared that you know, and then square root your answer. Or alternatively, if you have 3D problems, you're going to go short side squared plus the next short side squared plus the third short side squared, and that's going to give you your diagonal. Now we're going to look at two problems. The first one's going to be a 3D problem. Then we'll look at a two-dimensional problem. Matthew's just bought a new trailer, and this has dimensions of 1.7 meters by 2.5 meters by 0.5 meters. Now Matthew wants to know what the longest length of wood that can fit into the trailer without sticking out the top. Now that's going to be a diagonal piece. So think. This doesn't look like a 2D problem. It's a three-dimensional problem. We have three sides. And we're aiming to find the distance from the front left-hand corner to the very back right-hand corner, or another one of those same diagonal lengths. So we must use our 3D Pythagoras formula. a squared plus b squared plus c squared equals d squared. So labeling our sides, a, b, and c, we can find our length d. Substituting in a is 1.7, b is 2.5, and c is 0.5, we can plug this into our calculator to find d squared. Now d squared is 9.39 meters. So in order to find d, I hope you remember that we need to square root. So square rooting our 9.39 gives us a final answer of 3.06. And remember I said, this is a merit or excellence level question. So you're going to need to write a sentence at the end of this which explains your answer. It's not good enough just to write 3.06 equals d. You need to say, therefore, the longest length of wood would be 3.6 meters long, which he could fit in his trailer. The next question we're going to look at, we're going to look at a 2D Pythagoras question. Here's one where Ellie and Rob are designing a triathlon course. The swim leg is around a triangular course A to B to C. Now, A to B is 250 meters. B to C is 100 meters. 
Now we need to work out the length of A to C and they tell us the angle at B is 90 degrees. Now this is a Pythagoras question and I hope you can see now what this side will be labeled as. This side's going to be labeled as C because it's the longest side and it's the one opposite this right angle. So we label this one C and we label the two sides we know, A and B. It doesn't matter which way around we do it. So writing out our formula now, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Remember, you're going to square the two numbers and add them together. Once you put that in your calculator, you'll get this big answer of 72,500 and that equals C squared. But we don't want to know a massive answer and don't get caught out and think you're doing it wrong when you get this big answer. You need to square root your answer. So to find C, we square root 72,500 and that gives us the length C of 269.3 meters. And if we want to write this down properly, we'd say length AC equals 269.3 meters. And that's everything you need to know from this video.